asking for something cheaper simply for the sake of getting it cheaper when you're not really like an established customer, I struggle with that one just a little bit. Tired of paying 10%, 15% or more to sell your cards, comics and digital collectibles? How does 1% sound? Too good to be true? Well, not anymore. MySlabs.com is the web's premier user-driven marketplace for buying and selling slabbed cards, sealed wax, and now slab comics and digital collectibles. So the next time you're forced to pay 10% or more to sell something from your collection, head over to MySlabs.com and join the 1% revolution. Reggie here and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. A couple of weeks ago, I recorded a video that talked about the fact that a lot of people right now are selling comics and not all of those people that are selling are really knowledgeable enough to properly sell and ship comics. But today we're going to look at it from the other side and highlight the fact that there are a lot of buyers out there that are not good buyers. And this video has the potential to ruffle some feathers, but that is not my goal. My goal is to have a little fun and maybe also point out some things that I observe that we potentially can do better with. Down in the comment section, I want to encourage you to leave your thoughts behind. Keep it polite, but please leave your thoughts behind because I am interested as to whether you've seen some of these things out there, whether there's some other observations that you've had. One of the first things that I wanna talk about that grates my cheese just a little bit is when people ask for discounts for no apparent reason. And what I mean by that is that if the fair market value of a comic has dropped, if you look at a comic and you make an observation of a defect that is not disclosed, I think that those are two legitimate reasons why you should actually try to take some money off of something that you're trying to buy. But asking for something cheaper simply for the sake of getting it cheaper when you're not really like an established customer, I struggle with that one just a little bit. And, and certainly I'm not saying that there isn't room for negotiation because there always is. Personally, when I'm selling a comic, I try to be very thoughtful in how much I am actually asking for that comic. I try to root the, the asking price in some actual data. And so I'm very purposeful in that versus just picking a number and throwing it out there and then expecting people to either pay for it or push back against it. I try to price it appropriately. So again, this is one of those things that jumps out at me as being some maybe bad behavior Others might view it as just part of the hobby, but you know, the whole thing is to throw some stuff out there for people to think about and to consider and even comment on. The second thing that I want to highlight are those buyers that will attempt to cancel a transaction after they have completed it. And specifically what I'm talking about are those people that get caught up in the excitement of an auction. They bid on something, they win it and then they try to cancel it. I'm also talking about those folks that will hit the buy it now button and then buy something and then again, try to cancel it after. Part of the problem is that buyers get very excited and they don't necessarily pay attention to the defects that are clearly being shown in a photo or details that are being disclosed in the description. I am not talking about those sellers that are using filters or hiding little things inside of the, the descriptions. I'm talking about full disclosure by the seller and the buyer not paying attention. This is something that is a big issue, especially if it's an auction, because by winning that auction and then trying to cancel it, you are taking opportunities away from that seller, where that seller could have sold that to someone else that paid attention to all the details. So again, something to think about, something to consider. The third thing that I wanna talk about is somewhat associated with the last, and it is getting caught up in the FOMO and overbidding on a comic or an item. There is a reason why I personally do not participate in auctions, and I don't participate because I get excited, and I want to win, I want the book, and I will go after it, and sometimes, as a result of that excitement, I will actually overpay for that item. This is not necessarily a good thing. It's not a good thing for the individual that, that wins and pays more than the actual value of that comic, but it's also not a good thing overall because you're pushing the price 
point for that particular item maybe higher than what it should be, which makes it difficult for the next person that comes along. Now, this is not to say that you should not pay a little extra for something that you really want. It's about making sure that you're being smart about how you are spending your money. So this next item has the potential to be controversial, but I am going to throw it out there anyway for consideration. Blasting sellers on social media. Now, I am not saying that people should not have grievances. I am not saying that people should not be angry, but I am saying that you probably want to take some time to ensure that you as the buyer are trying to resolve any issue that you encounter with a seller privately first. If you are unable to resolve the conflict or the issue or whatever it is, then by all means do what you feel is appropriate. But I've actually seen some people that will immediately take to social media to start bashing a seller without actually giving that seller an opportunity to correct what has gone wrong. As a seller myself, I can tell you for a fact that I make a lot of mistakes. I make a lot of mistakes and I am very thankful to my customers who will actually give me an opportunity to correct the mistake that I've made. And, and by giving me that opportunity, I think we all walk away with an understanding that mistakes happen, but that oftentimes people are willing to correct those mistakes when they do occur. So my recommendation or whatever you want to take it is to give people an opportunity before lighting them up. The last and final thing that I will say in this video is that anything that is done by a buyer that is detrimental to the community and to the hobby is just just wrong. I mean, for, for lack of any other word to plug in there, it is just wrong. And I am specifically thinking about things like shield bidding, which is different from bidding up a comic because you really want it. Shield bidding is just some really negative stuff that Doug and I have spoken about in previous videos in which there is a little bit of collusion between a seller and his or her friends that are bidding up the comic to try to drive the value of an item up higher than where it should be. And ultimately the fake bidders actually back out and stick somebody else with an item that they should have been able to get for a much lower price. As I've said before, anytime money is involved, there will be bad actors. And if there is anybody that participates in this kind of stuff, it is just not good for the hobby in any way, shape, or form. And if you don't believe that it happens, uh, do some research because there is ample evidence out there of this happening, especially on platforms like eBay. So definitely something to, uh, to think about and to have in mind. With that said, I am going to wrap up this video again. This video is not about bashing people. It is about throwing a few things out there for people to think about. And my hope is that as a result, we can all kind of learn from some of this stuff, do better. That is ultimately what it's about. As always, if you want to reach out to me, feel free to do so on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care. Mm -hmm.